Welcome back to another special edition of The Preview Show! <laughs> Welcome back. We are back for another one of the special. Last night we talked about there. I should, have, well, I, uh, how rude of me. I should introduce myself. I'm Casey Campbell. Of course, you know that's Jonathan Thiel from The Racing Experts. Um, <coughs> night, last night we got to talk about Ganassi Racing, but tonight we're going to talk about something else. We're going to talk about Brad Keselowski's tenure with Team Penske. And it's pretty significant because usually when drivers have been with an organization as long as Brad has with Team Penske, you know, this is probably outside of the championship, one of the biggest storylines and one of the biggest goodbyes that that was made. Of course, last year was Jimmy Johnson, Clint Boyer retiring, Matt Kenseth retiring, Eric Jones leaving Gibbs um, and plenty, plenty more. But this was one of the, this is, I think, one of the biggest goodbyes is Brad starts a new journey with Roush Fenway Racing. Um, we got to look back at his tenure with Team Penske, and it was a very interesting thing when he when he started at uh, we started at Penske, I think, in 2010. Yeah, actually, you know, if you look at the stats, uh, 2010 was the first full time season for Brad at Team, but I actually did three races at the end of the 2009 NASCAR Cup Series season. It's kind of weird because at Homestead, he was driving the number 88 for Junior Motorsports, of course, a Hendrick affiliated team. But then on Sunday, he was driving the number 12 for Penske Racing. Uh, took over for David Stremme, who didn't really get the greatest results in that car, was involved in several incidents, got let go toward the end of the season. Uh, really just that tenure, with Penske, it didn't start off great. There were only two top tens, uh, 25th place finish in points in 2010, even into 2011. Of course, he won the Xfinity Series Championship in 2010 with that iconic discount tire, uh, Ruby Tuesday, yeah. Dodge Charger back then. But 2011 didn't really start that well. And then of course there was the ankle injury that Brad had during a test. And it just seemed like after the fact, it, it was like a switch flipped with him because he went from being 21st in points after Indianapolis and only a couple top tens to uh, four top three finishes in a row and two wins and made the chase that year. And that was really just the start of something that now at the end of his tenure, we can say was pretty legendary. If you just consider everything that it had an effect on now looking at where this team is going to go in the future. Yeah, for sure. So when we talk about when he kind of started in 2010, we didn't really think of much because that Xfinity program was very, very good for team Penske um, in the, in the past year, I think it was called Penske Racing at the time. Um, really, that year was was pretty good, and he won the he won the championship. And and this was a year when when Cup guys could still run for mm -hmm. for the championship. And of course, he ran you know full time Cup Series for Penske in 2010 as well. But overall, it was. Um, it, it, was, it was a good year because that was the last year where cup guys could win, go run for the Xfinity title, run for the truck series title. They could do all these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was the last year of uh, bushwhacking as you would like to call it. Um, of course, going back to the old NASCAR Bush series, but yeah, you, you touched on it very well of how the cup series guys really dominated the series. Because, of course, it was Brad Kozlowski running full-time. But then you also had Carl Edwards, who did some full-time stints in the early 2000s, uh, in late or in the late 2000s and early 2010s, where won a lot of races, placed in the top 10, top 5, had a really good points finish. And it was just kind of an environment that, yes, you know, we needed the cup guys in there to give the young guns, you know, some place to prove themselves. Case in point, Brad and how well he did against the Cup guys. But there was just a problem when you had somebody like Kyle Busch coming in, running 29 races, scoring 13, uh, 13 wins in 2010, 22 top fives, 25 top tens, just really outweighing 
the competition to a level that just didn't really make sense. But once again, you know, it was necessary to some extent and Brad rose above. And I think that's really where he proved his talent was just being able to be so successful in 2009 before he joined Penske about how, you know, he placed up there with Carl Edwards, with Kyle Busch, you know, running very well. He finished third in points that year, really just proved his talent and then decided to flip the script in 2010. Yeah, he, he did winning the, what was then the nationwide series championship. And then in 2011, he got one of the biggest things in, in there taking over that iconic number two car, the, what was then the Miller like Dodge. And that's an iconic car, you know, iconic paint scheme, iconic paint schemes. You know, when a sponsor and a car number goes right, you think of the rusty Wallace days in nineties mm-hmm. and early two thousands. Um, and, and even in the early nineties too. Um, but when you take over that kind of car, and I think Brad knew that and Brad knew the history of what Rusty did is, as Brad likes to say, he's a historian of the sport. He likes that side of things. And of course, being from Michigan, getting to be paired with the captain, someone that's done a lot um, for the city of Detroit. And of course, with today's announcement with the Grand Prix going back down, down, back downtown Detroit. So similar to that but going into 2011 in that season we didn't really expect a lot from brad in the two car and then goes and wins that uh that race at kansas and i think uh things got taken off from there yeah and you know even after that kansas race it was still like brad needed just some just a little bit more of a boost because he had kind of a mediocre finish a pocono mediocre finish at michigan again Good top tens at Sonoma and Kentucky, of course. But like I mentioned before, you know, kind of setting this up, it was, I, I think it was really that injury. After the injury happened, something clicked with Brad, you know, further down the road with someone like Kyle Busch and how unfortunately, of course, he was injured in the 2015 NASCAR Xfinity Series opener at Daytona. But it seemed like, and it's very interesting because they're both, they're two similar drivers who have run into each other countless times on the racetrack, but both of them had an injury that looked like it was going to take them out, looked like it was going to be detrimental to their runs and their career, but it actually ended up helping them. And I think it was kind of giving, uh, giving a way to, bring more patience, bring more of a finesse, having to work around a specific challenge, like a leg injury in Kyle Busch's case or an ankle injury in Brad Kozlowski's case. Because you look at the numbers just from the start of the season, how Brad, you know, only scored two top fives to start the season, like the first 20 races. And then right out of the gate after the injury, he scores four finishes of third or better. It, it was really clear that there was something that just clicked within Brad. Also, too, you got to remember, Paul Wolf was a pretty unknown crew chief at the time. This was his first ever season in Cup. Uh, was a down-and-out driver, but had won the Xfinity title with Brad the season before. And this was really the season where we not only saw the rise of Brad, but we also saw the rise of Paul Wolf too. Yeah, in that 2011 season, he he, you know, he got that win at Kansas. Then he won at Pocono, and then he, I think when you win it, when you win that when he won that Bristol Night Race, I think that's really when I think you can get put on the map. Yeah, that was a big statement win, especially because Jeff Gordon had a really good car that night, and with the way Bristol was at the time, of course, with the different tire strategy calls, Brad got out ahead. Jeff couldn't pass Martin Truex Jr. on the inside just with the way the track was. And Brad went and won his first of many races at Bristol Motor Speedway and put him in a good spot for the wild card run that season and really showed that he was going to be someone who's going to run for the championship in the chase. Yeah, for sure. And, well, he didn't get any more win, and he had a really good season in 2011. But 2012. We mm-hmm. talk about that year because, yes, that was the championship year. But 2012 was, a, was obviously a, a, a big year for him. We had, had to get through, you know, 
getting through those 20, that 2011 season. But, but his 2012 season was, was pretty good. Getting off that, that starting off with a win where he got it last year at Bristol and then probably one of his, probably the most successful track that he has had was with Talladega where he won his first race. And so that, yeah. was, that was the championship year, but a lot happened that year to kind of, to kind of put him in that position to win the championship. And it was really between him and Jimmy Johnson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a great year to, to watch just the battle between Jimmy Johnson and Brad Kozlowski. Although it wasn't as mono e mono like Carl Edwards and Tony Stewart was in 2011. It was a really good sequel. I think of the battle that they had at Texas Motor Speedway in the fall race there where Brad was literally drifting through the trial while trying to hang on to a, a chance at beating Jimmy Johnson for the win. Of course, Jimmy Johnson won the battle and Brad went on to win the war, but it was a great battle, a lot of fun just to see somebody standing up to Jimmy Johnson because you have to remember at the time, Jimmy had won five in a row in 06 through 2010. Any chance that any contender had at trying to beat Jimmy Johnson just seemed to fall by the wayside for whatever reason. And it looked like it was going to be the same thing in 2012. But the opposite ended up happening, of course, with Jimmy having mechanical issues and different woes in the last two races and Brad capitalizing on it to win his first championship. That was a huge statement saying that I'm here. I am an elite Cup Series driver and, you know, I belong. Yeah. And of course that, that, that I believe that was Roger's first championship in, that was. in NASCAR. And, and it was also what a way for Dodge to go out because that was, of course, Dodge was leaving after the 2012 season team. Uh, Penske already announced that they were going to switch to Ford um, beginning in the 2013 season with, uh, with, the Gen 6 car. So what a, what a way for that to happen. And when they won that, when he won that championship, and I know that, you know, for, for a few years ago, Penske had his first Daytona 500 win. When Brad got there those first two years, you definitely could see a shift in Team Penske because look where it was. And it was a good team, mm-hmm. but it wasn't a great team. Mm-hmm. It was a very inconsistent team because you think dating back to when Rusty Wallace left the team course in 2005, went into retirement, you know, Kurt Busch and Ryan Newman, they struggled in 2006. Of course, that was attributable to the issues with the charger and some teams running the intrepid on the intermediate tracks and some of the aero issues that happened then. But then in 2007, the performance picked back up. Then 2008, it was off again. Then 2009, Kurt Busch was running well, but his other teammates weren't. Then in 2010, Kurt was still running well and his teammates weren't. After that point, there just seemed to be more of a consistency with the team. And I think that came from just having Brad there as such a great talent and also just having Paul Wolf there too as a, a real great engineering mind who meshed well with Brad. Because, you know, we've seen it before with, someone like Chad Knauss and William Byron or, you know, Jimmy Johnson and uh, Kevin Mendering or uh, in his season where he didn't really mesh well with the crew chief and the team struggled as a whole as a result of it. So they were able to mesh well. And I think that translated to success for the whole team. Absolutely. Okay. So we go into 2013 and, um, yeah, not I not the best year, not the best year for Brad because a new car, new manufacturer that it going in as the defending champion. I know that was a year that that year was not good for Brad, but you no. know he the win at Charlotte, but rebound in fourteen to have a pretty good year. Mm-hmm. A really good year for Brad in two thousand fourteen. A really controversial year too. Uh, if you look at the playoffs and just what happened in the playoffs of running in to Tony Stewart and Matt Kinseth in the same race, you know, at Charlotte, 
running into Jeff Gordon, you know, having run-ins with them, not making the championship four. He had a really good season. Not, not going to take anything away from that. Six wins, 17 top fives, 20 top tens, 15 under 40 laps led. It was a really good season, but it was a season where I, I think we started to see the maturation, the maturing of Brad Kozlowski because prior to 2003, uh, prior to 2014, Brad was a very outspoken character, but not in the way that we see now where he's very wise and calculated with his words. It was more of a brashness, more of a, a, a cockiness to it. And it, it got him in trouble. I mean, no, no joke around about that. You know, he alleged that uh, Hendrick Motorsports was doing some sort of finessing with their parts and pieces. And uh, it was of course had the run-ins and the fight with Jeff Gordon and his whole pit crew on pit road and Kevin Harvick pushing him. You know, it was a season where he had success at least in 2014, but he really learned a hard lesson that I think shaped him into kind of the elder statesman figure that we now see him uh, transitioning, transitioning into as he leaves Penske and goes to Roush. Yeah. So, in, so really, in I, I think in 15, it, it's similar to 13. Only had one win that year, but mm-hmm. didn't have the year because 15 was 15 was just really, really, I don't know, off. Mm-hmm. Would you say? Off in some senses. It, it's a very deceiving season. It's a lot like Kyle Larson's 2018 season where he went winless, but he led a lot of laps, had a good average finish because – Brad, he led 1,184 laps, but only one of those counted toward a victory, and that was his only victory on the season. I still remember the loss that he had in the fall Texas race where he led 312 laps in the race and got passed by Jimmy Johnson with less than 15 laps to go. And, of course, that ended up taking him out of a championship four spot. Again, for Brad, it was just a year where he had a lot of success. He had a lot going for him, but just couldn't capitalize on it for one reason or another. And, you know, it was was an interesting season. It's a very interesting season to look at if you look at just the statistics of it. And then turn it around in 16, 17, 18. And then then really, in in these last, really last five years, you could clump these all together. Mm hmm. You had the, one of the most consistent drivers the last, you know, the la- the past five years, mm-hmm. because you know you look at his seasons from sixteen to to last season, it was a mm-hmm. really good stretch for Brad, and really that's when Team Penske kind of really took over as free as you know one of the top Ford teams, and yes. Stuart Haas was also at the top of their at, at the top of their reins as they joined the Ford Brigade during that time. But that this is this is when Team Penske at the time was at one of the height of their powers. Oh, definitely. And you even saw that with just the way Joey Logano performed. Uh, we would be well remiss to not talk about Joey Logano when talking about Team Penske and Brad Kozlowski's run with the team because of course, Brad Kozlowski was the one who recommended Joey Logano come over there and that Roger Penske sign him after, of course, you know, AJ Almdinger kind of burned out. Sam Horst Jr. didn't get considered for the ride. Um, you know, Joey Logano, of course, in 2018, he won the championship. Uh, Brad, you know, he won three races, was consistent, you know, fell out after the round of 12 and I, you really just see, you know, with the way Joey Logano performed that it, Brad's influence on the team was very distinct in making them a top team and also leaving a spot open for Ryan Blaney to come in to where now he has become sort of like the top driver for Team Penske now, of course, with the way he's performed this season and the way he's been. Yeah, when you look at drivers that came in during Brad's tenure, we completely missed this when we were talking about 2013, but Joey Logano came into the team and he mm-hmm. was kind of as those, as, as team Penske was dominant, it was between the two, which was a dominant team. And then he also had the 22, which was another dominant team. 
And that's, that's the expectation of Team Penske. But really, it was – Brad kind of started the turnaround. Joey came in, just added to it. Now with mm-hmm. Ryan coming in, it's, it, it's added to it more. Between those three, Brad kind of started what Team Penske really was today. Yeah. And you think about, too, also the influence that Brad Kozlowski's truck team had on everything because Ryan Blaney – got his big shot of course he got his big shot with tommy baldwin racing but you know he got his true legitimate chance at consistently winning races through brad kozlowski racing and eventually worked up to the cup series to now where he's driving the 12. also too you have to consider tyler reddick you know even though he's now driving for rcr he started out at brad kozlowski racing uh austin Sindrick, who is going to be taking over the two he started out at Brad Kozlowski Racing. And as we move into where Brad's going next, his success at Team Penske really helped shape where he was going to go next and what was going to come after. He really made his own fortune in uh, Team Penske and in NASCAR to be able to learn what it took to be a good team owner and also be able to groom talent that would come in and pick up where he left off and also you know maybe in the future someone he could pick up as a driver to support with roush maybe roush keselowski racing we still haven't heard the official word on that yet though (laughs) yeah still waiting on that but as he transitioned let's talk about brad this season what are your thoughts on brad i know he's only had one win that was early on at talladega but overall how do you think brad's season has gone this year Yes, he's not going to be competing for a championship, but overall, what are you going to remember from the 2021 season for Brad? To be honest, not a whole lot. It hasn't been Brad's best season at Team Penske. It's the least amount of laps he's led since 2011. Uh, fewest top 10 since you know 2013. You know, not a whole lot of top fives. You know, not not really performing great, but. I think what I'm going to remember the most about this season is just what he's been able to do these last couple weeks to really give Roger Penske one last good ride in that two car, because we saw his performance at Martinsville where he did really well. He was battling with Kyle Busch for a position at the end of the race in second place. Uh, We saw him at Texas where he was running for the win in the final restart and probably would have had a chance, you know, maybe with a couple more laps in the run. Unfortunately, Kansas ran into some issues. All of Team Penske ran into some issues at Kansas for the most part. But I think I'll remember that Brad really gave a good effort to make it a, to, to a good effort in the final run with someone who gave him a lot. Uh, really gave back well to Roger Penske in the last moment of being able to give him something. I think that's what I'll remember. What, what will you remember, Casey? Well, I'm going to, this is kept, not from, not from just this season, but I was just actually thinking about this. Um, two things that, you know, really the overall, the turnaround that he brought to the Penske organization um, really came in there and, you know, just running, keeping that iconic two car, um, being at, kept it at is its iconic stat. It's a it's an iconic number in the sport, the two. Um, and you know that 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 numbers are very very important. Like you know the eleven, the forty three, the three, the twenty four, um, mm-hmm. the twenty, the forty eight. Um, there there's some iconic numbers in the sport, and it's it's a big deal when that two car goes into victory lap. One of the most recognizable cars. And also in, in terms of sponsors, you know, you look at, you know, he kept Miller Lite for so many years, but he also had some other partners as well. You know, the Discount Tire Partnership, Auto Trader, Dent Wizard, um, you know, a lot, a lot of other partners, and I'm reminisced to miss a lot of them. But the, the, he, he kept a lot of those partners that were, that were introduced them to Team Penske and brought them, and brought them on board. Um, mm-hmm. money line another one so it's uh, huge it's been, a, it's been a big it's been a big deal but going into this as he makes the move to roush fenway racing let's talk about what's next yeah goes to the six car we found out 
this week that Matt McCall is going to be his crew chief, of course, uh, who's currently with Kurt Busch. He's going to be moving to Roush Fenway Racing on the six. What's he going to do there? Because this is a, this is another. He's going to another Michigan team owner in Jack Roush to bring back an iconic race team. That um, of course it's uh, this is a, this is a bigger long term project for Brad. Yeah, and you know there are some light bulbs that were going off in my head when you're talking about uh, just surmising Brad's run at Team Penske. Uh, transforming a team and i think that's the power that brad has with not only his talent on the racetrack but also his smarts and know-how of the sport you know you said he's a historian of the sport he's also a student of the sport because if you remember when he shut down his truck series team i believe it was after 2018 2019 you could probably look that up for me what was it 2017 2017. Thank you. Uh, after he shut down his truck team, he opened up his own manufacturing company uh, in hopes of doing something like what he's doing now, very similar to what Gene Haas has done. And now you see Stuart Haas doing really well, very similar to the side business that uh, Rick Hendrick has. And of course, Roger Penske and all his different entities and ventures that he has. And now we're going to get the chance to see I think we're going to see Brad smarts put to the test. It's going to be interesting, not only as a driver, but as an owner and somebody who is astute in the sport. And it's going to be very interesting to see. I think for next season, if I had to make a prediction, which is just about impossible with all the different variables going into the next season, let alone the variable of how Kozlowski is going to perform and how Roush family is going to perform. I think we could see some some success by the end of the 2022 season. I don't know if we're going to see it right away. I think we'll see some. I think Brad will perform very solidly to start next season. But it's going to take a little bit of time to get going with that team. But I think once they hit the ground running, it's going to be really good. You just look at somebody like Matt Kenseth who came over there and had success by the end of his tenure in the six or Newman who started off really well and ran really well with that six car Brad going over there and doing something similar could be something really interesting to watch as Phoenix rolls around this time next year. What do you think for the transition? Everyone, I was just about to say, everyone's going to be on this, you know, this next, you forgot the next gen car is coming in. And so that that's a big variable. Everyone's going to have to try to figure out this new car and how it runs and how it's, how it's going to be so definitely going to be uh going to be interesting to see how how he does and how Roush Fenway does because the next gen car is going to change a lot of things and how uh just how NASCAR is overall run but mm-hmm. there's definitely going to see definitely going to be seeing really what's what's gonna what's gonna happen with this uh with this new car and everything like that but we'll find Shoot. out well I hope you've liked all these trivia videos that we've been doing um well, first off, uh, Brad Keselowski will make his final start for Team Penske this weekend at Phoenix Raceway in the Cup Race, which will be Sunday in NBC. Jonathan, you're going to be down there. You're going to witness a lot of history going down there. Last Gen 6 car, last race for Brad at uh, Team Penske, last Chip Ganassi race uh, for in the, on the NASCAR side of things. You're going to witness a, you're going to witness a lot of goodbyes, and and uh, definitely it's going to be good. Make sure you make sure you get some. Uh, Make sure you uh, shake the hands of the Chip Ganassi employees and say, "Hey, thank you." Uh, for all that. It, but, uh, it, it's going to be a lot of Gen Six car yeah. pictures too. Yeah, it's going to be a good weekend. Uh, the, I, I know we have a couple of photographers uh, that are going to be down there. Of course, Dominic and I are going to be down there, and uh, I, I know that when we have our assignment meeting, one of the main assignments is going to be get a camera down at Brad Kozlowski's car at the end of the race. Cause you, you can bet your bottom dollar that the captain and Brad are going to have a great moment. And that's going to be really something special to watch. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, uh, the preview show is coming tomorrow. Mitchell Brewer and I will join us. This one will be traveling to Phoenix, Arizona tomorrow. So, um, uh, <laughs> he'll join us there and, uh, I'll review. Why not? Let's just. Uh, what are your picks for tomorrow? Truck, Arca West, Xfinity, and Cup. Why not? Since we have. Ooh, all right. 
So I'm really excited about the Arca West race that like, I, of course the championship for is something that excites me anytime, but this Arca West race is going to be great. You have over 30 cars entered for the race. Thanks. You have seven drivers in cont- Casey, you're uh, you're the light bulbs going off in your head too. seven drivers in contention for the title. The top five drivers are only six points apart. This is going to be a crazy race. You're not going to want to miss it. Uh, I, I know I sound like Charlie Crawl right now, but like you really are not going to want to miss it. It's going to be really good. Track Pass, MRN, Sirius XM, NASCAR Radio. With that said, I think Jesse Love is going to walk away with the title. And I think he's going to walk away with a race win. Uh, for the Truck Series, uh, with our championship four, I just think John Hunter Nemechek is going to seal the deal I am feeling, you know, I know you give me crap about this, but I'm feeling very status quo this weekend. Oh, goodness. So, with that said, I think for the truck series, John Hunter Nemechek will get it done. And I think Austin Sindrick is going to get it done in the Xfinity series. He's the only Phoenix race winner in the championship four. He's won the last two Phoenix races for the NASCAR Xfinity series. He has an overwhelming advantage on the field that I think he's going to capitalize on. Nothing to lose. He's going to Cup next year. I think he's going to win the championship. Cup Series? Yeah, I know I said status quo. But I think we're going to see somewhat of an upset at Phoenix this weekend. And he's done really well on the 750 horsepower tracks. I think, and he's been very clean and consistent. I think Martin Truex Jr. is going to get it done at Phoenix. Well, Martin Truex, I mean, that's not an upset pick, though. Martin Truex Jr. won at Phoenix in, in the uh, in the spring, and actually, I think that, I believe that's his first. He did win in the spring. Yeah, he did win in the, he won the spring race there. So, um, it's it's not an upset pick. I won't reveal my picks until tomorrow, but... Um, mm-hmm. I have a pretty good idea. So just to check, all of these drivers that you have picked are going to win, are in the championship four. Are you saying they're going to win the race and the championship as well? They're going to win the race and the championship, yes. Of course, you got to win the race to win the championship. Well, you don't have to. Ask Matt Crafton. Let's, that's another debate for another day. Um, for sure. All right. Jonathan Fial, thank you so much for joining us. Of course, we're going to have a lot more of these specials during the off season. So if you think my channel is going to go uh, in hibernation, you are wrong. There's going to be plenty of this. There's also going to be plenty of silly season news. Go check my channel. We have Myatt Snyder. We talked to today. He made a big announcement with jo- uh, as he's going to Jordan Anderson. We also talked to Dean Thompson this week. And we talked to Andy Lally, of course, who's going to go to um, – Alpha Prime Racing, which was, which is still known as Martin's Motorsports for this, for this, uh, for, for this season. Um, plenty more videos I have uploaded that will be out, uploaded throughout the next two days. So stay tuned for that. Yeah. All right. Got to give a plug while we're here too. Uh, the RaceExperts.com. I recently uh, did an article on Phoenix Raceway. I talked with the track president uh, Julie Geese. She was really great to talk to. Uh, just really, I went over how this weekend is the start of a new era for Phoenix Raceway and how her team has really been prepping for this big weekend. So go check it out. She was really awesome to talk to. Also preview the championship four coming up. We're also going to talk about Anthony Alfredo. We're going to talk about a really nice tribute to our chief photographer who sadly passed away back in September. God rest her soul. That's going to be a really good piece. Uh, and plus more coverage from this weekend from all the different series. Yeah, it's going to be fun. I think you got uh, Nick Sanchez and Roger Carruth you're talking to as well, I think. They'll be coming up. They are. They are indeed. <laughs> all right. For Jonathan Fiel, I'm Casey Campbell. Thank you so much. We'll, uh, we'll be talking. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow for the preview show. Mitchell Brewer will be here um, to uh, talk preview more on this weekend at Phoenix.